All right, next matchup. Yankees, Mets, 7-10, Flushing, Queens. No line on the total or the money line as of yet. We have Domingo Herman for the Yankees, Jason Vargas for the Mets. Herman comes into this game with a 9-2 record, 3.86 ERA, and a 1.11 whip. The Yankees are 54-28 overall for the year. They're also 23-14 when traveling. They've gone 9-1 in their last 10 ball games at any location. Now the Mets on the other side, a little bit different story. They're 38-47 overall for the year. They're also just 18 and 19 against the spread at home. And of course, when I refer to the spread or the number or covering, uh, I'm referring to the run line. So once again, the Mets just 18 and 19 ATS at home in Flushing, Queens. Now total wise, the Mets are 22 and 15 to the over at home. The Yankees are an amazing 29 and 8 to the over when traveling. Give me the Yankees on the money line in this one and the over if that line opens up within reason. All right, next matchup. Philadelphia Phillies taking on the Atlanta Braves 7-10 Eastern first pitch. I'm sorry, 7-20 Eastern first pitch in Atlanta. The Braves are minus 140, totals 10 and a half. We did see a 10 cent move toward Atlanta and movement upward on the total. The Braves open a buck 30 up to 140, total open 10 up to 10 and a half. We have Bryce Wilson for the Braves, Nick Pavetta for the Phils. Now, Nick Pavetta, he has been getting knocked around a little bit this year, but he comes into this game with a 4-2 record. Meanwhile, Bryce Wilson on the other side, 8-3-1 ERA, 1.85 whip. The Phils have won five out of their last seven games. They also rank eighth in walks on average per game. So a lot of free passes there, moving guys around, uh, making some things uh, happen on the offensive side of things. Now, the Braves on the other side, this is not going to bode well for them. They're 28th in walks allowed. They're also 20th in runs allowed at home. When it comes to the total, Atlanta's 5-1 to the over, taking on Philadelphia this year. They're also 67% to the over at home. So with all that in mind, I'm going to leave Philadelphia plus 1.5, getting the job done on the run line and the over 10.5 in that game. Next matchup, Angels, Rangers, 805 Texas. The Angels are... Minus 125, totals at 11. We did see a nickel move toward the Angels and movement downward on the total. LA open a buck 20, up to a buck and a quarter. Total open 11 and a half, down to 11 flat. We have Ariel Gerardo for the Rangers. Uh, Griffin Canning for the Angels. Now, Canning was supposed to start on Tuesday night, uh, but that got pushed back. I think uh, Suarez, or uh, I forget who's starting on Tuesday night for the Angels. I think it was, um, was it Suarez? Uh, but anyway, uh, Canning got pushed back. So Canning will be starting uh, Wednesday evening for the Angels. Uh, that's the good news. Here's the bad news. Canning's just 3-4 and four on the year. Meanwhile, Gerardo on the other side for Texas, 5-3 and three with a 3.90 ERA. And, of course, that's a pretty good ERA with these juice baseballs this year and uh, these very uh, small, short porches. Now, Texas has been great in Arlington this year. They're 28-15 and 15 at home. They're also third in home scoring. The Angels on the other side, 22nd in striking batters out on the road. Uh, they're in a current three-game skid. And when it comes to the total, the Angels are 8-3 and three to the under when Canning makes the start. Uh, Texas is 7-3 to three the under, taking on the Angels this year. So with all that in mind, I'm going to lean Rangers plus 1.5, getting the job done on the run line at home, and the under 11 runs in that game. All right, next matchup, Tigers taking on the White Sox. That's going to be game two of the doubleheader. A-10 Eastern first pitch at Guaranteed Rate Field in Chicago. No line currently posted for this game. We have Russ uh, Detweiler for uh, the White Sox. Uh, Nick Ramirez for the Tigers. Ramirez comes into this game with a 4.05 ERA and a 1.32 whip. I'm going to lean White Sox with the sweep. Give me Chicago White Sox getting the job done for some money line cash. All right, next game, Houston taking on Colorado. 810 Coors Field in the Mile High City. Uh, Houston's minus 135, totals 13 and a half. Uh, we did see a nickel fade of Houston in the early wagering. We also saw movement downward on the total. Uh, Houston opened $1.40 down to minus 135. Total opened 14 down to 13 and a half. We got Peter Lambert for the Rockies, Wade Miley for the Astros. Miley 6-4 with a 3-3-9 ERA and a 1.17 whip. Lambert on the other side comes into this uh, ball game 
with a 6.57 ERA and a 1.46 whip. Houston's first in hits allowed on the road, third in runs allowed on the road as well. They're winning 68% of their games as the favorite. They're also winning 71% of their games at the current market price. Now, Colorado on the other side, winning just 40% of their games as the home dog. They've also won just 6 out of 15 ball games at the current market price. Now, total-wise, Houston's 11-6 to the under when Miley makes the start. Give me the Astros, minus 135 and the under, 13 and a half in this game. I keep reaching in my pocket because I'm used to switching the channels behind me with the screen and the thing goes up and down and you see the different games and all that. That's why I'm like all fidgety. But anyway, it's good to be back in the third room, the spare room in front of the white screen. It's like the old days. Not bad. I get to stand up, move around a little bit. You guys see how much weight I gain? I'm kind of getting buff. But uh, fat too. But anyway, uh, next game. Cleveland taking on Kansas City. 8-15 Kauffman Stadium. The Indians are minus 150. Totals at 9. We saw a 10-cent fade of the Indians and in movement downward on the total. The Indians open a buck 60, down the minus 150. Total open 9.5, down to 9 flat. Uh, the Royals are plus 140 on the money line. Cleveland plus a buck on the run line. We have Mike Clevinger for the Indians. Danny Duffy for the Royals. Uh, Duffy's just 3-4 and four with a 4-4-3 ERA and a 1-3-3 whip. Meanwhile, Clevinger on the other side comes into this game with a 1.09 whip. He also has 31 Ks in just 18 and a third innings pitched. Uh, maybe that's what they've been missing all year long. Uh, as Clevinger coming out pretty hot in the early going uh, after uh, obviously uh, missing a significant portion of the year. Now the Indians are fifth in runs allowed, fifth in hits allowed. They've won six out of their last nine ball games. Kansas City on the other side, winners in just 16 out of 41 at home. They also rank 25th in home scoring on average per game. They're also second to last in striking batters out at home. Now, total-wise, Kansas City is 7-5 to the under when Duffy makes the start. Cleveland on the other side, 22-14 to the under, taking on teams under 460. Give me the Indians, minus 150, and the under nine runs in that game. Next matchup, Twins, Athletics, 907 Oakland. The Twins are minus 125, totals 9.5. Not a whole lot of movement on the money line. Uh, pretty good two-way action there. Uh, we did see a little bit of movement upward on the total. So once again, Minnesota minus a buck and a quarter. Total was nine, up to nine and a half. Uh, Oakland plus $1.15 on the money line. Minnesota plus 130, laying the run and a half. We have Gibson for the Twins, Anderson for the A's. Anderson's 0-3 on the year with a 7.13 ERA and a 1.47 whip. Gibson on the other side, 8-4 and four on the year, 88 strikeouts in 87 and two-thirds innings pitched. Oakland is 26th in striking batters out on average per game. They're also winning just 42% of their games as the home dog. Minnesota on the other side, well, they're winning 75% of their games as the road favorite. Give me the Twins, minus a buck and a quarter, and the over. Nine and a half in that matchup there. All right, next game, Giants, Padres, 9-10, San Diego. The Padres are minus 140, totals eight and a half. We're seeing a nickel fade of the Padres and movement downward on the total. San Diego open 145, down to 140. Total open nine, down to eight and a half. San Fran's plus 130 on the money line. San Diego plus a buck 45, laying the run and a half. We have Cal Quantrill for the Padres. Anderson for the Giants. Anderson's 3-2 and two with a 3.86 ERA. Cal Quantrill on the other side. Uh, that's a tongue twister. Cal Quantrill on the other side. Two and two with a 4.66 ERA and a 1.36 whip. San Diego's 27th in striking out on average per game. They're also second to last in home hits. The Giants on the other side, very good in run line caches when traveling. They're 23 and 18 ATS away from home. They've also won three out of their last four ball games outright. Total wise, San Fran six and four to the under, taking on the Padres this year. Give me the Giants plus one and a half in the under, eight and a half in that game. Next matchup, Arizona, Los Angeles Dodgers, 10-10, Dodger Stadium. The Dodgers are minus 255, totals at eight. We saw a 20-cent fade of LA in the early wagering. We also saw movement downward on the total. The Dodgers open 275, down to 255. Total open eight and a half, down to eight flat. The D-backs are plus 235 on the money line. 
Dodgers minus a buck and a quarter, laying the run and a half. We have Walker Bueller for the Dodgers, Merrill Kelly for the D-backs. Kelly's just 7-8 and eight with a 4-0-0 ERA. Bueller on the other side, outstanding. He's 8-1 and one on the year, 3-4-3 ERA, 0.97 whip. He's also got 104 strikeouts in just 97 innings pitched. The Dodgers, make no mistake about it, are unbeatable at home. They're 34-9 in Dodger Stadium. They're also fourth on average in home hits per game. Arizona on the other side, 20th in hits allowed on the road. They're also 21st in striking batters out on the road. And when it comes to the total, the Dodgers are 70% to the over in their second game without a day off. Give me the Dodgers minus one and a half and the over eight runs in that ball game. All right, next and final game for the show, it is going to be Cardinals, Mariners, 10-10 Seattle. The cards are minus 130, totals nine and a half. Not a whole lot of movement on the money line here. Pretty good two-way action there. We did see a little bit of movement upward on the total. So once again, St. Louis open and remains minus 130. Total open nine, up to nine and a half. Seattle's plus a buck 20 on the money line. Uh, St. Louis uh, plus a buck 10 on the run line. Sorry, I have STL and SEA written here. And uh, I think I'm getting a little bit confused. St. Louis Cardinals minus 130. Seattle plus a buck 20 on the money line. St. Louis plus a buck ten on the run line. St. Louis is favored in this one. They have Adam Wainwright on the bump for him. Meanwhile, Seattle has Mike Leak. Leak is just seven and seven with a four six three ERA and a one point two eight WHIP. Seattle is also terrible at home. They've won just seventeen out of forty two games in Seattle. They also rank dead last in striking out at home. And to be specific, they're striking out ten point one two times per contest on average on their home field. Now, St. Louis on the other side, they're sixth in hits allowed. They're also winning 64% of their games as the official road favorite. And here's really the kicker. They're winning 77% of their games played at the current market price. Now, total wise, Seattle is an amazing 31 and 11 to the over at home, depending on where you're shopping at. Give me the Cardinals minus 130 and the over nine and a half in that game. Guys, I forgot to write the shout outs. On the paper, I'm going to have to actually physically pull the uh, phone out so we can get to the uh, to the shout-outs. So let me go ahead and turn the uh, volume down. Let's go ahead and get into some shout-outs sponsored by Patreon.com slash Brock Page. First of all, to start, got to give a shout-out to Michael Bujoso, who said, Cool on the commercials, dude. Shit gets annoying. Uh, you know what, Michael? I got to do a better job. I mean... Um, I just have to, uh, tell Google to stop putting ads on my content so I can stop making money and supporting my family. Um, I think I'll do that, Mike. Thank you for the suggestion and thank you for watching and thank you for your time leaving a comment. Uh, shout out to Will Smith who said, good morning, bro. Let's go. Gotta get that Brock Page mug for the Cafe Bustelo, man. I know it's not uh, four in the morning. I don't have the mug with me. But uh, hey, a mug with like maybe this logo on it. That's probably a, a pretty good idea. Shout out to my man Jimmy Johnson, Stephen Lewis, Matt, it's going to be May, representing the Beard Gang. Uh, shout out to Danny J, Final Gaming, who Final Gaming was not happy with me yesterday. He goes, please stop insulting Great American Ballpark. It's ballpark, not small park. Final Gaming, I apologize. I have to do a better job. It slipped, and I said it wrong. And uh, I'm human. I'm human, kid. I make mistakes. I'm sorry. And I hope you can forgive me and continue to enjoy my content. I got to do a better job. All right, next shout out, Mike Wilkerson, James Medina. My man, Pappy Longwood. Always good to see Pappy Longwood, 69. And I'll tell you what, Pappy Longwood is a sports betting enthusiast. Because I'm just like you guys. I watch the other content out there as well. I enjoy it. Hey, I'm sitting at a desk for 10, 11, 12 hours a day. I'm just ripping podcast after podcast. If you're making handicapping videos on YouTube, I know who you are. Chances are. Uh, and I also really enjoy uh, hot boxing with Mike Tyson. That is my favorite stuff, man. You just, you just want to like, take a hit of the toe, man. want to take the toe. Have you taken the toe? Gotta love it, man. Mike Tyson, Iron Mike. 
Love it. It's inspirational. But anyway, Pappy Longwood 69, what's up to you? Got to give a shout out to Bo Dunn. Great dude. Bo Dunn, he's got a channel of his own. Uh, shout out to Bo, John, uh, Bo Dunn, who's a great guy. Uh, also, ProLine Master, who's got a channel of his own as well. Uh, got to give a shout out to Matthias Mall, uh, Chuck Pinter. And then we're going to go ahead and go to the next video, see if we uh, missed anybody, have any new commenters. Uh, Real Real, who said, your baseball picks helped me turn a $100 bonus cash given from a betting site into 3K. And I cashed it out. Thanks, boss. You are very welcome, Real Real. That is a real testimonial. Thank you so much. Got to give a shout out to the Overseer. Good to see the Overseer back in the comments section. He said, thanks for the shout out, brother. Now let's go get this bag. Absolutely. Uh, shout out to Straight to the Point. Will Smith, uh, Bleds W. I think I shouted you out earlier. And uh, Pappy Longwood again. So anyway, those are the shout outs brought to you by uh, patreon.com slash Brock page. And speaking of which, make sure you guys check out that website, uh, patreon.com slash Brock page. That's my website. We do daily plays on that site each and every day. We have plenty of different memberships, tiers and packages, and, uh, we're doing awesome in our underdog plays. That's the dog of the day package membership tier, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the only thing that I do know is that, uh, it's producing a lot of winners right now, a lot of plus money winners. So anyway, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page if you're in need of some more content from me. Most importantly, I got to thank you for watching this program right here on YouTube. I certainly hope uh, you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. Uh, that's going to do it for me. We're in the spare room. We'll probably be back uh, in front of the uh, main screen uh, in a couple of days, but for now, that's going to do it for me. And don't forget to check me out on patreon.com slash Brock Page.